the cell has a two in it. So here's the criteria count if that range has the criteria of a two, and then it counted how many of them there are. And then uh, we divided, we divide out to get to our uh, uh, heads, the, which is the heads divided by the total. Next, we might want to run similar examples or experiments where we're going to flip it more times. So in this case, our number sequence got a little bit messed up over here in Excel, but we're imagining these are multiple tests where we're going to be flipping the coin many more times using the same concept in Excel of equals random between one and two, one representing heads, two representing tails. So now we have a bunch of tests that we did and we just copied this random generation tool in all of the cells. This is just gonna randomly generate uh, all of our outcomes for us. And then if I copy that entire random generation tool onto another cell so that I can then change it from a random generation to just hard coded numbers, we get our results. And so again, the number sequence on the left-hand side got a little bit uh, messed up. So we've, we, uh, we've flipped it a bunch of times here. I'm not sure exactly uh, how many times, but we will find out in the calculations down here. So then I can sum each of these up. So if I look at the heads, the formula is going to be Excel. Look at this column of numbers that we flipped. Uh, I think it's going to be 75 times, but look at that column of numbers and then and then tell me how many times count the times that you see a one and and excel gives us 34 times and then we do the same thing for the, the tails we say hey excel uh count this column of numbers and tell me how many times you get a 41 and i mean i'm sorry how many times you get a two that's this uh count if and excel says 41 times now between a one and a two which are the two things that populate these cells we come up to 75 as the total and so then we can say all right if there's 75 of them i can take a look at the heads 34 out of divided by the tails uh, i mean divided by the total 75 and that comes out to 45 about percent 45.33 percent i could do the same for the tails 41 divided to by out of the total 75 gives us 54.6655 about 45 plus 55 is a hundred percent, which is kind of our double check that we have done things uh, correctly there. So then if I, if I look at it, just the heads, then I would expect it to come out, you know, 50, 50 or the entire population. If it was a fair coin would be 50, 50. If we flipped it infinite amount of times here, we came out to 45. There's 53, 56, 52. We could do the same thing for tails, of course. But if we just zero in on one of the outcomes, then it gets a little bit easier for us to think of that series of outcomes, right? So 60, this one's, you know, pretty high kind of outline for 74 flips, right? But it still could clearly happen that we have, you know, 45s. Here's our, you know, it should be, you know, we would think it would be around 50, 50. Now, if I took that series here of percentages results, I might want to extract that and put it in a vertical uh, column, in a column format. So I could do that. So I could, in Excel, I could do that by basically uh, copying it and then pasting it and transpose it. So we'll do that in Excel if you want to practice that in this practice problem in Excel. And then I could compare it to what the hypothetical expected result would be, meaning this would be the average uh, for the entire population. It would come out 50-50 if we flipped it infinite amount of times, if it was a fair coin. And then we can look at the differences between the outcomes per test. So this is the outcomes per test, 45% heads versus 50% for the actual. This one came out 53 versus three, uh, versus 50, 3% difference, 56 versus 50. And you can see that of course, we would expect that some of, some of the outcomes would be over, some would be under uh, if these were random samples. Now, if we counted uh, all of the tests, which we did 75 of them, then and if I took the average of all the averages, then we're getting pretty close, right? Now we're at 50.33 as opposed to 50. So, so, so you could see as, of course, we take a larger sample, you would expect us to get closer 
to the actual average of the entire population, which is a theoretical concept in this case of 50-50 uh, of an infinite number of flips. So here's uh, the, 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 the number of heads if we were to take a, a, a histogram of the data and so and then this one so let's so we could do and we could do this multiple times right i could take the random number generator and basically do the same uh the same thing again and we're not going to come out with the exact same results you'll see over here we came out with well i can see it in my data the first one was uh was 45 percent and over here where did I where did I just go? I came out with uh, 45. Well, that one happened to be the same, but then it was 53 and 56. <laughs> so if I go back on over, so now we did the same thing, and I've got uh, I've got uh, the 45, 51, 51. So here's the same process that we did to generate another bunch of flips, 75 uh, flips each. And, and we did it, you know, multiple times. We could take the same, you know, data, the heads data, represent it vertically. So here it is represented vertically, 45, 51, 51. And we can compare, you know, histograms that are generated from them. The histograms are not gonna be, you know, exactly the same, but you would expect them to start looking similar as we have uh, you know, larger data sets would be the general idea. So these are histograms of the averages of all the outcomes that we did uh, 100 tests uh, of 75. Now then you might then say, well, well, how could I simulate a, a situation where it's not a fair coin? So now I, now I have the null hypothesis, 